Capricorn, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for November 2018. Alright Capricorn, before we jump in I want to let you know the brand new blog is up at stormygrace.com so you can either head over there via that direction or click in the description box down below. A link will take you right over there. And so far what I've got up for you are the major astrological transits and aspects happening in November, December, January and I am working on February right now as well as a little piece of information to show you how to grab your chart and align those things with your chart. So go over, take advantage of it. We don't have time to talk about every single aspect every month. So this is a chance to get you a little bit more in-depth information as to what's going on in the play-by-play -play of the month, all right? All right, Capricorn, so we have got a movable month happening this month. We've got planets changing signs. We've got planets changing directions. We've got planets who are in a different direction changing sign. I mean, there, there's a lot happening this month, so it's definitely creating some energy for us to work with. The big news is, is that we've got Jupiter after 13 months coming out of the sign of Scorpio and moving into Sagittarius, moving into the 12th house space, which is gorgeous. If you talk to people, the 12th house space with Jupiter here because of the abundance, the wisdom that comes with it, the generosity, this is considered a guardian angel placement. So I'll talk more about that in just a minute. The placement I am the most excited about coming up in this next 18 months is that we've got the North Node of Destiny moving into the sign of Cancer out of the sign of Leo. Now the North Node of Destiny is a I will fulfill something placement. It's beautiful. This lights up the seventh house space for you so you will over this next 18 months fulfill something because where the north node goes you will fulfill a destiny so when you look back 18 months you're gonna be like oh my gosh I did fill in the blank right you can even start now look at your Leo energy where did it hit your chart what house did it hit and what'd you get done because you did get something done now because we've got the north node over in cancer it means that the south node is going to be in your sign in Capricorn along with Saturn and Pluto over there now where that south node is at, we're looking to detach. With Saturn over there, we're looking to mature so that we understand why we're going to detach. So over this next 18 months, some pieces of you, your ego, your identity, the things that don't work and don't fit anymore, a new image, these are things that are going to adjust for you. I'm going to be making a separate north node in Cancer video, so make sure you check that out, okay? As for right now, let's jump in and break this month down. All right, right at the beginning of the month on the 6th is when we have that North Node of Destiny moving from Leo into Cancer, lighting up that 7th house space. You're going to have changes in your relationships, some depth to your relationships. Cancer is a nurturing energy. You will likely be putting some nurturing into these relationships that maybe even over the last 18 months you spent time developing or finding your voice in. So it's going to be a really lovely time around relationships. Also on the same day, we've got Uranus, who is already retrograde, but he's going to slide from Taurus back into Aries. Now, this lights up the fourth house space for you. Home, family, real estate, property, um, your internal security, your foundations, your childhood. All of these things come from the fourth house space. Women, right? So with Uranus sliding back into Aries, which has so much to do with your identity and your ego and how you regard yourself, one of the things that you get to do here is you don't have to start all over because Uranus has already worked on this area for seven years, right? Now your job during this retrograde or what you can use it for is to go back and see if there are still any habits you have in this area that you need to break, right? Are there still things that you need to tear down where it's like, okay, and they're not the huge things, right? They're are these last little ideas and behaviors and you have until March to get rid of them or to say that's not serving me. I also think that anytime we're in a retrograde is a phenomenal time to review. That's what you're doing. You're facing backwards. We're re-retrograding, going to the past. So look back over the last seven years. Look back over your last few months. How have you changed? How has your household area changed? How has your relationship with women changed, right? Uranus is an incredibly social and intuitive energy and are you still bonking head, bonking head having problems with women and I would say Capricorn too if you have a specific issue with maybe one woman or you had a falling out or something this could definitely be a time between now and March hopefully sooner than later where you get to put that to rest as well 
All right, on November 7th, we've got a new moon happening in Scorpio, lighting up the 11th house space for you. Again, we see social energy. But the sun and the moon are together here. And when the sun and the moon are together like this, possibilities are absolutely endless, right? So you could achieve anything at this time. You could begin anything at this time. Social things, friendships, networking, having new networking coming Maybe to you your even life. join a new networking or social sphere in some way. It's also a phenomenal time because remember at the new moon we're beginning something we're planting the seeds of intention of what we want here maybe you're getting back into friendships with women right maybe you're having that kind of connection it's also a phenomenal time for upgrading your socials right do you need new technology in your life do you need to change your social profiles do those need a little bump up do you need to be willing to say yeah i would i would actually love to go to lunch with everybody instead of kind of holding back right where are you at socially versus your isolation status so i think take a look at that because this is a beautiful time to start that over all right, on the 8th, we've got Jupiter entering into Sagittarius where he's home and very comfortable. This is right behind you, so in the 12th house space. Now, they call this the guardian angel placement because Jupiter is so kind, so generous, so benefic, so just lush, you know? And it shows up and it amplifies because wherever Jupiter goes, he wants to expand, right? So in the 12th house space, it's like you are aware of your guides, your guardians, the vibrations, the aura around you, and you just feel surrounded and protected. I think that this is a phenomenal placement because when Jupiter expands you in that way, it's almost like that quote that they say, if you knew how well you were loved and protected, you'd never worry. It's that energy. You get to become a risk taker a little bit because you're like, are you kidding me? I am divinely protected, guided, and solidly covered in light, okay? Let me go do this stuff. Let me go search these things. Let me develop my spirituality. Jupiter in the 12th house, phenomenal. You want to meet your spirit guides? You want to have a conversation with the guardian angel? You want to take a risk on something? This is your energy. Now, the other thing I think Jupiter in the 12th house is phenomenal for is showing you what needs to end, helping you with transition. But if you're a student, a researcher, you're working on something behind the scenes, you're trying to discover information, Jupiter's gonna expand it so you're gonna be able to see it. So really, really lovely stuff. Now, I will tell you too, on the real, Jupiter in the 12th house it is very expansive, right? The shadow sector gets expanded. It could bring in an affair. Jupiter is not attached to the romantic pieces of it, but he'll, he could issue an opportunity. So be mindful of that. This could be the year that something interesting blows into your life and how you handle that is up to you, okay? All right, on the 15th, we've got Mars entering into Pisces, into your third house space. This is not a particularly active space for Mars because he wants to go fast and do things and Pisces is like, oh, let's just slow down and be water. And he's like, oh my God, please help me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what the slowdown of energy I think is great for you for is it helps you relook over conversation. The way that you're talking to people, the way people are talking to you, maybe some decisions or a contract that you need to sign or make or something like that, right? You get to take action on it. Take action in this third house space, studying something, writing something, your website. Any of these kind of third house mental things becomes a place where you can take action. And you may also be trying to take action and feel a little bit unclear about what you want. That energy will pass. But either way, Mars is going to slow down here, which is great because when we slow down, we can see a few more details, which is beneficial to everybody. All right, on the 16th busy day, we've got Venus coming out of retrograde in the sign of Libra. So lighting up the top of your chart, this 10th house space. Now, Venus direct is phenomenal because what it could do here is bring a new relationship or a fresh relationship or even a relationship that's already been there. It kind of gets to start over because you're more willing to negotiate. You're more willing to compromise. There's just a lot more harmony and diplomacy available in that 10th house. Now, it could bring a raise or promotion because Venus does like like money, right? It just makes you very magnetic, very attractive. So you're pulling in some good vibes to you. It's a really delicious energy. So enjoy that, okay? On the same day, we've got Mercury taking a retrograde. So they kind of flip flop on us. Not kind of, they do. So Mercury is going to go retrograde in Sagittarius. So again, this 12th house space is very busy. On the 22nd, we also have the sun coming up there. So this month, Capricorn, you are going to look at this 12th house space. And while it's getting expanded and you're protected, you also get to see what you need to to 
clean up. Mercury retrograde is a time when you're facing backwards. You've got to review this 12th house. What's there? What do you need to talk about? What do you need to reconsider? What do you need to revise? Where do you need to reconnect, right? If your reconnection, if your connection's off, a reconnection here is going to be beautiful. Then the sun's going to bring this light, heat, life, and vitality to the table. So it's really a space where the 12th house energy over the next four weeks for sure is going to be on your agenda, okay? On the 23rd, we've got a full moon happening in Gemini in the sixth house space for you. Now, the full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to take a shift here. Now, this could be conversations about health right and I think about mental health in the sixth house as well what is happening in your head up here Capricorn because it is affecting the rest of your body right is this affecting that mind body spirit connection so what's happening here does this need a refresh Do you need to start over do you need to end something I'm thinking at work too for some of you at work a project could be coming to an end or a project may need an adjustment or something like that or an adjustment maybe in your daily routine so these will be things that you'll get to look at because they're going to have an end so that they can have a fresh start or they're going to have an end so that they can move on and, and it just doesn't serve you anymore okay on the 24th of the month Neptune is coming direct and this is in Pisces so again in this third house space Neptune and Mars working together up there you really may not be sure on some communication things this month but I say use the Neptunian energy to bring the compassion to the table compassion and action together so Neptune and Mars is really a place you can make a lot of progress this month now the deal is with Neptune when Neptune is retrograde we have the dream we have the vision right we have it we feel like something's coming I can't I can't tell you exactly what's happening but I feel it I feel like something's coming but it doesn't ever really feel like it lands now when Neptune comes direct we can take the dream and the vision and make it a concrete reality right so this is the time where some things some compassion some creativity some spirituality maybe even a spiritual awakening right new conversation conversation of healing comes to the table and becomes a lot more of a concrete reality right from a more peaceful serene place from a sober honest place is a place where you can make truthful decisions and that is what we need definitely going further forward and i also think that neptune here in this third house um i think it gives you the sense that you do deserve what's in your life you know what i mean you are deserving so that may be something that's happening to that conversation up in your mind as well Either way, I think it's going to be a nice month. I can't wait to see what you're getting into Capricorn. So please keep me posted in the comment section down below. Check out the blog at stormygrace.com and like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month. Okay. Bye Cap.